What is up guys? Back for another one here. Um, today's video was supposed to be about tuning and stuff, but I don't have any tuning stuff to do right now actually. I mean I do for my launch control, but I'm going to wait. Uh, Saturday morning I'm getting my high, fuel, high flow fuel line and putting in my E85 sensor and then eventually wiring that sensor to my P3 gauge. Um, there will be two separate videos in time, but I wanted to uh, just kind of go over the car, show you guys. Uh, I get a lot of questions of you know how I daily the car, uh, what's everything look like. So I'm gonna give you guys a nice little overview. Plus I'm about to hit 60,000, um, and the only real issues I've ever ran into were stuff that I've caused. So uh, let's start out with the engine bay, and I'll show you guys some of the interior bits. A lot of the suspension stuff you can't really see, but uh, just just show you. So up front here, uh, my car is extremely dirty, so don't don't mind that. But I got Raceline intake, the hose, the 90, um, I got Racing Line intercooler down in there, uh, Racing Line remote, washer fill, catch can, BFI stage one motor, uh, you can't see the stage two trans, but it's, it's down in there. We got the Precision Raceworks 925cc kit and rail. Uh, this is this connector here is for the ethanol sensor that's going to go here along with the new line. It gets this line right here. It goes all the way back to the fuel pump. So this whole thing will be replaced with a with an AN line. Um, we're still on the absolute stock coil packs, like from the factory. I'm actually ordering new ones for when the turbo comes. We got the stock IS38. I'm on my second one since I blew the first one. PTP turbo blanket. Um, what is this? Revo downpipe that I have heat wrapped to a Remus exhaust. Uh, what else is going up here? We got the APR boost tab. We got the CTS pipes that um, fitment is terrible with this intake. I actually did buy an APR coolant line, but it, there's not enough room for it to snake under there, as you can see, because it goes from this nipple and it's supposed to like go under here, but it doesn't. It doesn't work. So. I have an APR line just, just sitting there. Uh, still on the stock high pressure fuel pump. Uh, I'm on my second battery. The, the first one failed you know, like 45K, so not, not too bad there. Oh, I recently just got this uh, racing line oil dipstick. I'm going to get the, uh, whatchamacallit, oil cap too. I got the Porsche uh, coolant cap. And in here, can't really see it. We got the BC Racing coilovers with my very shitty cutting, and then this Eurocode front strut brace is probably one of the best mods I've ever bought. That front brace has done so much good for this car in terms of steering feel. Um, it's like one of the first things I probably should have did. Like after springs and I, uh, what you call it? Sway bar, I should have got that. I didn't even know it existed until not all that long ago, and I still sat on it for like three months until buying it. And I highly, highly, highly suggest getting that. And then they have a combo you can get that and the brace that's in the hatch, which I'll show you now. Um, it's a great combo. If you're not a big money spender and don't want to spend the money on the, uh, what's it called? The other braces out there, like the, the full braces to go across, I definitely recommend this. But this is how I daily the car without the back seats. I got my backpack in there for work. But this brace is pretty pretty neat. If you didn't see my video on that, uh, I threw some stickers on there. But this thing is definitely nice with it. I took the floor out. I have it sitting up here actually because it kind of like rattles around without the seat. So uh, I popped that out. The sub definitely puts in work, especially when the back seats are out. I have this thing like turned up to I think like five out of nine or five out of ten, whatever it is. And it hits, and it's pretty decent. Um, I'm not real big on audio, but uh, for what it is, to me, it's freaking nice. And I always keep uh, some gloves back here and some spare oil. And then, of course, little tool, little tool kit. But for the interior, it's pretty simple. I still have the stock shifter knob, at least. But uh, in time, that's going away. Ooh, another thing that I always get questioned about People always ask me where my radar is. This is where my radar is. I have it kind of like zip tied 
to this so it doesn't like fall on launches and stuff. I've had it fall multiple times. But with the radar detector back here and the speaker facing the way that it does, um, you know, with the hatch, it acts as like a sound amp amplifier. So I could have my music up super duper loud and with the radar going off, it like sends all the noise up to the front. And even with the windows down the music, I can still hear it. I hate wires. Like I absolutely hate wires, especially up front. I don't want, I don't even like plugging my phone into the car to use Android Auto because it bothers me. There's like wires that move and stuff. So having it back here, I did this in my Mark IV as well. Um, it's definitely nice with it. So if you can wire yours back here and you don't mind, I'd leave it. I can Bluetooth it to my phone to mute it when it's going off if need be. Um, I think a lot of new radar detectors are able to do this. This is like a $25 Amazon radar that I've had for probably six years and it's saved me a lot. <laughs> my interior is pretty basic. I got the P3 gauge. It has everything I really need. No need for other you know, gauges sitting about. I've seen some that do sit right into this vent. Um, I definitely like those. I thought about actually getting an additional gauge, but we'll see in time. Still on the stock, stock seats up here. I got some blue lighting to match with the blue sills and then the blue in the door here um, from DE Auto Key. I'm going to get their license plate lights here soon as well, but um, like I said, it's a stock shifter for now. I kind of do want the BFI weighted knob, but uh, everything else... Uh, that has to do with the shifter has been changed. I got the Diesel Geek short shifter, the uh, Super Pin, their other bushing for like up here. And like this thing is just, it is so nice. It is so nice. I am so in love with that. I saw the stock screen. I want to upgrade to the, uh, the bigger one. It'll bring it to like just about like this little bezel will be here. Everything will move over. This will be... You know, this blank area here will all go away. I'm sure you guys have seen them around, but uh, it's definitely nice with it. And everything else in here is pretty much the way it came from the factory. I got my, my tuning cable kind of tucked in here. I have my laptop still in the seat, and then the cable runs down and around, and I have it tucked in under the, uh, the thing, and I can just, you know, plug it into my module when need be. Another nice piece that I got is this GoPro mount. It hooks onto the seat. Uh, it swivels, it moves, it does all types of things. You can like, depending on, the, I mean, if you're doing drag racing, you got the guy on this side, you got the guy on this side, or you can even flip it backwards completely. It does all types of things. It was like 25 bucks on Amazon. Just search for headrest, GoPro mount. It's done me well. I've had it in here for quite some time. Another thing that I really like, um, and I have these for sale. If you guys want a pop socket, help support the channel, help me get... Um, to my threshold so I can get shirts made that would be great but with this mount I have here is just perfect it's just boom slips right in it doesn't go nowhere I've launched a car I autocross with this sitting here and the most it'll do is maybe turn a little bit but this is like absolutely perfect when you get a notification or whatever I mean this is about from where I see all I do is like barely tilt my head and you know, you're in there. It's real easy to sit there and tap through songs or, you know, if you text with swipe, swipe a reply real quick or just, you know, hit the, the voice button to, to talk. It's definitely nice with it. And I got my little little bow and stuff for the car, but that's pretty much it. There ain't too, too much going on. Excuse the dirty car, but it's supposed to, if it rained the last two days, it's going to rain the next two days. Today's the only nice day in between, but I've been rocking my uh, hypergrams here. <coughs> with my Federals as my dailies. Uh, I got the Stop Tech slotted rotors, EBC yellow pads, front and rear. Had them on since like 28,000 and they've been holding up great. I've had a few like actual time attack days and tons and tons of autocross and I've never had an issue. Uh, these tires are, especially for the price, 400 for a set and these things hold heat well. I mean, it, it was enough to snap my freaking axle, so. I'll let that speak for itself, but they're they're holding up great. Uh, the BCs, I absolutely love the BCs. Uh, I got what, is, what do we got? We got the, the BC coils with Swiss springs and uh, 034 rear sway bar with N links, 034 rear subframe reinforcement mount thingies, the 034 uh, rear strut mounts. Uh, full Remus exhaust. I need new tips. These carbon tips have have had way better days. Um, 
I need to shoot them an email and see what I can get going. We got the the good old shop dap cover there. I got some black emblems, Euro tails, and a big old sticker here for me. Got the Maxton spoiler. I've loved this thing from the get go. It's a fairly nice looking car, I'd say. She's she's looking good. Oh, and I got this spare hood over here from a GTI. It's got some damage on it. Shout out to Tyler. I got this from him. I don't know why the body shop had cut that, but it's just another place vents will go. Oh, there's my broken my broken axle. I'm gonna mount that on, on my wall or something, but eventually this hood will be cut up and I will put some real nice uh, vents in it and wrap it, but uh, that's in time. I need to find some fenders to go with it. But really here, I mean, I'm almost, I'm at 58,697, so almost 60K. I've been doing oil changes every 10K, um, filters every other oil change, and that's pretty much it for oil maintenance. I did the filter, the cabin filter once. I did, you know, pads and rotors that one time at like 28K. Um, I still want to stop coolant. What else? Uh, brake fluid, did that once. Um, Haldex fluid, did that twice, did that at 30 and then like 50 something. Um, I do my air filter about every oil change as well. I got two VWR filters and I just swap them out. So really, I mean, when it comes to like actual maintenance, it really hasn't, I haven't really had much of anything that was, that needed it like right away other than breaking that axle, which was my fault. And uh, the stock PVC did fail me at a very, very early uh, time, but I was, you know, racing the hell out of the car between autocross and drag racing and uh, going to time attack, and that failed on me. And I just saved up and got the, the racing line catch can set up, and I fixed that problem. And from then, I've never, I've never had an issue since. Um, there's some people that's had, like, leaking issues with those, but I don't even understand how or why I mean I have like the second revision there's probably been like another revision or two since then I think but it really it's just like location of little things I don't think it really would change this leaking problem but I personally haven't had an issue um, all of racing lines products that I've ever purchased have been 10 out of 10 along with the BFI mounts freaking love those oh and I have the APR uh, steel insert for the dog bone which I'm eventually going to upgrade to the full racing line mount whenever, probably after this turbo. It'll be turbo, then uh, front brakes, then probably that dog bone mount and control arms. Um, I don't know. I really don't really have anything negative to say about the car. Like I said, pretty much everything that's ever failed has been my fault, um, other than the PVC, which is still kind of my fault. But it, in my opinion, it probably shouldn't have failed. But car's just been great it's been a great car uh, and here we are rolling over to 60,000 I'll be throwing this big turbo on soon seeing what kind of power we're gonna make I'm really gonna try and get this car on the dyno as it sits now and uh, <laughs> see what she makes that way we at least have a comparison to when the turbo goes on on pump fuel and then versus uh, E85 when we get to that point I don't want to push it too much on E85 because I don't want to like have the torque number super high I'm gonna try and keep it around 420, 430, uh, keep my rods in check. I'm not going out to break records or anything. I and mean, it's a manual car, so I'm slow regardless. But um, autocross is the name of the game here. And I wanna try and be at the peak of what I can handle and what the car can handle and just see what the car does. Eventually, I'm gonna move out of this town and hopefully move somewhere near Austin and I can do track days at Coda and all the other stuff that goes on out there. But uh, for now, I'm doing parking lot racing with autocross because that's what's readily available and it's tons of fun. Like That's just what it is. I've never really been all that big into drag racing competitively. I do love to drag race. Like, I'll, I'll race anybody anytime. I don't give a shit. Win, lose, draw. But I'm not building the car for that. I'll just you know do that on the side. I'm out racing cars at the track with two and a half degrees of camber in the back, two, two degrees in the front, you know, on a setup that's I'm building for autocross so it's it's all fun and games for me but um, there's people in the comments oh your car should be faster like why like why why do you even care for one and secondly I'm building the car for autocross so I mean any time that I get or whatever it's just it's just for fun I'm not I'm not trying to do anything crazy but 
Well, that's all I got for the day. I'm sorry this wasn't too exciting, but like I said, that fuel line and stuff will be going in this weekend. Next weekend, there's no racing in the books. The, there is the weekend, or two weeks after that, but there is the weekend of the 11th. There's streetcar takeover in Oklahoma City. And I have a buddy that lives out there. Cam, if you're watching, I'll probably be texting you today, but I want to go out there and enter the streetcar takeover event. Um, maybe I'll actually break into the 11s or something, but I think it'd be cool to go out there and, and mess around. Uh, last year I went, it was a pretty cool time um, at the track and at nighttime afterwards. And OKC is just a beautiful city. The people are great, the roads are nice, and I just always have a good time when I go there. So I'm gonna try and get out there and do that, maybe take a day off work so I'm not like rushing back and, and all that, but we'll see. And then we, like I said, autocross 19th, and uh, I'll be going to Arizona for a couple days after that. I won't be taking this car, but maybe I'll record some shit out there. I don't know. We'll see. I don't want to make a trip out to like a 12 hour trip on these tires since I sold my Pretorias with the tires. I wasn't thinking about how I wanted to go to Colorado and OKC and all these other places and like Dallas for streetcar takeover. I totally, I totally slipped my mind. So. I mean, I was I, I plan on buying another set of wheels for the winter with different tires, but I was gonna do that at the end of summer because um, these tires are almost kind of beat. They got a couple more events left on them, but uh, I was just gonna replace these tires and then just keep chugging on these. But I, I guess I'll just find some like cheap five by one twelve seventeens or something on the market, something cheap cheap, and throw some cheap tires on just to get from A to B and then swap these on and and go crazy with it. But uh, we'll be looking at doing a tuning video along with uh, the fuel line and stuff this weekend. It should be pretty exciting. But yeah, that's all I got. Thanks for watching, guys. If you've got any questions, y'all know I reply to literally every single comment on these videos. I actually got a comment from a guy the other day saying it's so cool that I actually like take the time to sit down and like have length. It's not just like yes or no from me. Like I, I will, I will literally sit here and type a whole paragraph to you in the middle of the day or the middle of the night for that matter. Um, on a, on a post from you know a year and a half ago about something that isn't even relevant to me anymore. But I love to help people. The the reason I made this channel was to help people get them out. You know, go race your car, take it to autocross, go to the drag strip, do something, mod your car, have fun with it, and uh, just help others. Like don't. Don't be down there in the comments being mean. I don't have that problem. I've seen some other YouTubers. They, they got some people down in the comments that are that are pretty rude. And I'm just like, I'm glad that y'all aren't like that. Fingers crossed that doesn't change. But uh, yeah, like I said, that's all I got. Uh, thanks for listening to me ramble. And I'll catch you on the flip-flop.